welcome to today's Los Blancos podcast. Today we will be doing the Valladolid review. Uh, first home game of the season at the Bernabeu um, ends in a three 0 win. Maybe not so much as a of a of a yeah, um, a good performance as the three 0 win suggests, but nonetheless we still got the win. Now later on the season, after a, after a disappointing performance, I may and a potential win, I might say. Uh, well, we didn't we didn't play well, but at least we got the win. But that's not something I want to be saying so early on in the season. Um, I will say, second half was much better than the first half. First half I thought was really really bad. The 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 chance creation just was not there. The team couldn't break down by the lead, and a lot of the problems that we had against Mallorca in the second half last week, uh, we had once again against Valladolid. the lead. So I'm a bit I'm a bit concerned. Um, because second half, we obviously we we definitely benefited from Fede scoring the goal because I don't know how long that would have continued for, but nonetheless we still we won the game and it's important to get off the get off the books first and and actually start with a win because Barcelona have gone two or two, Atleti have uh, won their first game yesterday as well against Girona, so it's important for Andre to get get their first win of the season. So yeah, what are your thoughts on the on the overall result and the performance? I think um, we we showed that in the second half when uh, Brahim Diaz and, and Endrick came on scored. Um, despite you know Mbappe, Vinny, Rodrigo not having their best performances each, um, we still got the win in the end. And so that that shows us that you know if these guys aren't performing, yeah, did well in my opinion. Yeah, um, for the third goal, um, his um, third game passing, and his um, timing of the pass has killed it. Um, you know, one defensive tool was actually good in my opinion. I think he's a good player, but that's for another time. Yeah, hundred percent. I thought Sabas was actually good when he came on, um, and obviously his his action getting out of that pressure in the in the in our and off uh, led to Andrew's goal. So I thought Sabas, you know, that's that's a good omen for what's going to come from Sabas because I think having someone like Sabas who's so good um, in possession and so good under pressure, I think could be really important because. You see how these La Liga teams are playing against us, um, and so if you've got someone who can basically take two players out of the game, that could be f- pivotal for us. So, you know, I I want to see more from Sabalos, but you know this is a good start. Uh, I thought from him uh, in this in this game, uh, but I also want to talk about you know the, f- the difference between the first half and the second half because I thought they were they were. Um, Definitely evident uh, in two plays. I thought there was one play uh, in the, in the first half, around the thirtieth minute. I'd like to say where uh, Arda Gulev plays a, a really good fir- um, ball to Mbappe, uh, just a vertical straight up the pitch uh, ball, and Mbappe tries to flick it on, but Vinny is just not making that run. You can see when they're occupying, all of them are occupying the same position. There's just no space, and they all try to do this pretty link up play. Um, which obviously I don't mind them doing every once in a while. Um, it obviously works because they're all fantastic players in the, in the attack. But in the second half, I thought us, immediately after the goal, there was a there was a chance that we had where well, Adegola plays it to Vinny on the left. And because of Mbappe drawing two defenders through the middle, ultimately doing what Arsenal did last season, Mbappe drawing two, two defenders through the middle, Vinny had a, a one-on-one and he had unlimited space if he had beat that player. And then Vinny pulls it back to Ardu Gulera and Ardu Gulera just hits the defender, unfortunately, and it didn't, he didn't score, but it was a very good chance. And you can see what 
how much of a difference there is when you can see Mbappe playing through the middle and Mbappe trying to play off the left with Vinny. Vinny then gets a sort of one-on-one -on -one opportunity and Mbappe ultimately has to use his like gravitas to try and draw out defenders because that is the best cause of action. You know, these guys, I, I said this yesterday on the on the on the preview, on the Vidali preview. These these three guys are, are all fantastic at link up plays because they're they are fantastic footballers, three of the best in their position in the world. But you know, that's not what they're they are they are the best at. That's not what they, they got their reputation for. These three up front, they got their reputation for their one on one play and their ability to cook defenders. Um, in the in that in those one on ones, and if we're just gonna do link up, it's just not gonna work because that is not what these guys are the best at. Um, I think you you saw that in the second half when Vinny had so much more space. He he was he was so much more impactful. You saw it, Mbappe maybe wasn't so much more impactful, but he got a lot more off the ball work done, and he would, he definitely made a lot more runs in the second half. And then Rodrigo, obviously, I didn't think Rodrigo had the best performance, but first half I thought he he was actually the best of the three. Um, and then Ardogola made plenty of runs, had plenty of space, and he had a few chances which, on another day, I think Ardogola would have put away pretty damn easily. So you know, I think the second half there was a lot much, a lot more better. But for me, I think the key point to take away is these three up front have to have to ultimately stay far away from each other because these three all all you know require players to mark them. And if you if you give one on one to Vinny, he's gonna cook the defender. There's no there's no there's no exceptions. Uh, if you give a one-on-one -on -one to Mbappe, you know, and in this situation, Mbappe was the one drawing two defenders, but in other situations, it could be Mbappe and then when the one-on-one -on -one and Vinicius drawing two, two defenders. And so you can just see that give these players one-on-ones and, and Real Madrid create a lot more chances. And I think that is the that is the key point for me. You, uh, We don't want these one these link-up play, I think. For me, I think you've just got to get these individual moments a lot more often where Vinny, Mbappe and Rodrigo are taking their man on one-on-one -on -one and thus creating shots um, as a result. So, um, yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts on the on the change of the, of the performance from the first half to the second half? Yeah, like you said, you know, um, of course, you know, there's a lot of overloads on the left. I'm not sure that he did speak about it. And said that we have so many talented players who can play on the left that is not an issue for the team. But it's sometimes an issue, for example, when it's overcrowded and there's no space to play, you know, um, sometimes it works when there's a little bit of an overload. Um, but when there's an overload, there's still, like, for example, someone in the box, there's still someone um, to switch the play to, or there's still someone in the half spaces in the midfield or in the or in the middle of the pitch who can, who can receive the ball but uh, in the earlier game you know it was a bit difficult you know but of course against Atalanta in the first game when they played together it was a bit difficult because of the space in my opinion and today as well against Mallorca it was a space as well but I think Madrid we having this issue of starting a bit too strong taking some time to figure out the opponent in my opinion, I believe that we can do a better job at that. I believe that we cannot really depend on moment of brilliance or magic or I wouldn't say luck, but for example, the goal today it was a big deflection and that honestly turned the game a bit and we had more space in the second half. Maybe um, we just need to find a way to, to get the goal really, in my opinion, I think. Uh, I think space is something important. We need balance as well, you know, without it because it's, it's a bit difficult, of course, you know. Um, but I think it's it's a work in progress, in my opinion. There's a lot of there's a lot of work to be done. It has less to do with formation and, of course, more to do with, of course, the positional sense and the finals of the players, in my opinion. So I think there's a lot that needs to be worked on, in my opinion. There's a bit of difficulty in terms of the build-up, in terms of the speed and the intensity sometimes. You know, of course, there are moments when when they, we play nice quick football, uh, like the third goal and final goal. But of course, there are moments early in the first half that we struggle, in my opinion. Of course, without running on, without two because it's a bit difficult, you know, um, but we don't have Kune and Machek. And of course the bios as well. 
but it's but for me yes there's a lot that needs to be done in my opinion it's going to take time i'm not yet concerned you know um, after the first big game of the season and how we react according to how that game goes then then i guess um we can make further analysis but yes i'm a bit um, a bit disappointed but i wouldn't say i'm concerned yet but there's there's still some good to be done yeah 100 when you look at the um you mentioned Tony Cruz. i mean you look at the midfield today i thought um show many in valverde I don't know about the midfield duo. I mean, it's only two games, so we can't overreact. And at this current moment in time, we don't have alternatives other than just Luka Modric on the bench. So uh, and Danny Savas, but I don't, I doubt Danny Savas is going to start. So it, it it's a bit difficult. I mean, the midfield duo of of um, of Schürrle and 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 Fede, I just didn't think it worked. The dynamic between them is, I think they they play too similar. I don't think they, they're similar players, but I think they play a bit too similar for it to work. You saw the last season when Schoemeni and Kamavinga were injured, you saw Fede and Tony Cruz form a, a partnership as a double pivot, and it worked fantastically because you saw Tony Cruz being the passing hub of the team, and Fede covering for everything that Tony Cruz can't do. But at the end of the day, you know, both of these players in Schoemeni and, and, and Fede Valverde, they're well-rounded footballers, and they're both fantastic at Almost every facet of the game. Um, you, 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 when Tony Cruz wasn't so, you know, he's not so quick. He's not so, um, so defensively capable as Fede Valverde. But Schumeni is 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 very quick himself. He's very physically commanding himself, and he's and he's um he's obviously very very good defender as well. And so when you got two players that aren't exactly, you know, they aren't exactly complementing each other so well, then you've got sort of a, a bit of a problem. Obviously, I, th- I still think these two can figure it out together, but I do think maybe we need someone else to, to come into the midfield, a Kamavinga, who I think could really complement this midfield nicely. But um, I thought defensively they were both really good in the first half. I thought Fede especially, I thought was really good in the first half. And in the second half, I did think they picked it up. Definitely uh, the uh, on the other end, I thought they were... They were a lot more uh, uh, capable of uh, retaining the ball in the second half, so I thought they were much better. But I still think there's a lot to be decided, desired from this midfield. And if we are to replace Tony Cruz, I still think at this current moment in time, the best alternative is just to to, to play Modric as damage, damage limitation rather than trying to crowbar these two into, into, um, into trying to replace what Tony Cruz did because it is practically impossible to, to replace what he did. So... Uh, for me, that that's that's the main problem in the midfield. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, with Matrick, you know, um, I think Matrick, I think he hasn't really been amazing in the games that he's played. Um, even in this season, he's been good, but he hasn't been outstanding in my opinion. I think, I think yeah, he's a perfect replacement for Tony Cruz. It isn't what, in my opinion, we can do exactly what. Um, what Tony does, if I'm being honest, I think it's a bit, it's a bit difficult to you know tell if he should be a starter sometimes, you know, um, because it ha- it's been a good start, so kind of slow, um, but it's not, but it's not like he's having bad performances. He's having good performances, but I think maybe he's a player um, who you can keep off the bench. I think maybe you can look at Sabio sometimes. Um, to get some minutes um, because he's a hard worker in the field. Um, of course, he, he's really good in uh, the guessing of all. I think, uh, I think I was really happy with um, his little coming sometimes. I'm really happy that he, that he got some minutes. But his first uh, minutes for the season, I believe. Um, um, of course, you know, um, sometimes you, know, you need players like Sabayas in the squad. You need players like Madrid, even though they're not going to start. I think that they are useful, in my opinion. I think that there's still a lot of work to be done, like I said. But um, in certain games, you you need players like Sabayas ahead of Truman. You need Madrid starting ahead of Truman. You need players who can control the game better. In my opinion, the injury to Kamavinga um, is, is, of course, better than the scene to the power to start. Uh, in my opinion, I think Kamavinga would have been a, a really decisive figure early on this season. Um, Bellingham as well, his injury was two things down. Both of these players are starters, in my opinion, Bellingham and Kamavinga. So, that's, so that was the concern for me. 
hundred percent. And losing those two, we're gonna obviously have to adapt to that. But um, I still have confidence in these two players because they've shown us quite a lot of these last few years. Um, but you know, uh, so far it hasn't been great from these two. Or oh, that being said, Fede did obviously score the goal that that broke the deadlock, and he finally scored a free kick, which you know we've we've both been preaching about. You know, hopefully that. Fede can start taking these longer free kicks and start banging them in because of his shot power, of his technique is just perfect for that. And he obviously got his uh, got out on, on the market uh, for the first time from the free kick position. So yeah, I'm very happy for Fede that like, he, he, he got his second goal of the season um, and he's currently around for his top scorer. Let's see how long that lasts. Um, but let's talk about some good, uh, good performances because I think um, Eder Militao I thought was perfect. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Um, he the the timing of his challenges was fantastic. His his IQ seems to be back, and a lot of times last at the end of the last season, it did look like he was physically out of it. I thought he looked a bit mentally out of it, but so far this season he's been practically perfect. I think um, his 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 challenges have been perfect. There was one in the second half when the game was still one 0 and it was Silla. I think it was uh, he was bearing down one on one with uh, Courtois. And Miletao slides in and just kicks the and gets the ball out of play, and it was just fantastic from from Miletao. I think Rudiger is still adapting to having Miletao as his partner, and I think Rudiger is struggling a little bit because you know these two are are similar players, um, in the way that they're aggressive and they like to take the the the, the, man, the challenge man on and straight head on and and try and try and do that. But I I think. Eventually, we we obviously have no choice. We don't have a choice in in in, in substituting either one of them. But I think um, you know Militao shown fantastic signs so far this season. In the three games he's played, I think he's looked great in all three of them. I think um, this game has definitely has been his best. I think he was just perfect. And obviously, let's talk about him on the ball as well because he gave the assist for uh, Brahim Diaz's goal as well. And just thoroughly, I think he, I saw the stat you posted on your page. 11 out, 8 out of 11 uh, long balls that he made. I think he was fantastic in possession as well. And, you know, there was one one dribble where he just, he charged through and there was constantly guys who trying to t take the ball off of him. And he, he, he just charged through, managed to get part of, through all of them. And, and I believe that attack fizzled to, to nothing in the end. But, you know, it's stuff like that, which you know Militao is so good at, which is just sometimes releasing the pressure. He he looks back to his best, and I'm so happy because Militao was one of my favorite favorite players before the before the injury, and um, it looks like he he's 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 recovered from the ACL pretty damn well. So, what were your thoughts on Militao and Rudiger's performance at the back today? You know, um, despite the the defensive concerns and the three games, we have only considered one goal. Um, of course, they are both good individual players. I believe that they still need to work a bit on their partnership. But I think the science this season has been positive compared to when they both started playing together. In my opinion, it was a bit different. It was a bit slow sometimes. You know, um, we lacked a lot sometimes. So I think I think the science the science are good, but there were a lot of difficulty. Um, maybe it's just not the play. So the positives is 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 important for me to look at. You know, um, I think that they're going to be the start of the season. Um, when Alaba coming from comes back, he's going to need time, and uh, Chouameni will be the alternative. Um, so we don't have Martin to replace Chouameni. Come up in as a judge. So planning on this and just at least now in this specific time, um, we need them to stay healthy, we need them to stay fit and I believe that the more games they get, the, the better they're going to play. Uh, so I'm looking forward to see, to see more of them uh, together. Um, yeah, they're both similar on occasions, you know, but uh, the highlight for both of them would be the fact that they both, their long ball ability on, the, on yesterday, in my opinion, was actually really popular, really a good positive, in my opinion, to at least get us out of some trouble. Um, in the town, it was just for the years, um, Tony's goal for Mbappe when he had that volley, you know, a uh, good passing, and it wasn't the only time that, that, he made, that he made these passes, you know, um, to find out how was I think that's a positive with the speed that we have in the, in the, in the, in the attack lineup. I think um, those outlet goals is going to be important. So, for me, um, 
there, there were some positives, um, of course, communication, they need to work on a bit um, in the preseason. Um, there was uh, there were some issues, um, but it got, actually got a bit better in terms of communication in terms of their intensity. Of course, the intensity they want to get better as um, the season is on. But, but yeah, it's, it's still a week. And we can pick us in my opinion, but the more games they, they get, I'm sure that the more positives we yeah, hundred percent. I mean, let's let's see what happens against Las Palmas. But um, yeah, I think it was um, it was a great performance by Militao. But Rudy was just getting up to speed, so I think um, yeah, let's see what happens. Um, I want to talk about the, the guys who came off the bench today. Um, obviously we've already talked about Dani Sabayos, but I think uh, Raheem Diaz came off the bench, and I think he was really good, exactly what we needed, and someone who's so vertical, so direct. I think is. Is, is a breath of fresh air after the first half performance that we got um, because I thought he was really good uh, off the bench and, and giving that giving us that and obviously scoring the goal uh, which is you know a show of great desire great composure as well in front of goal which you know we haven't really shown um, looking at Mbappe in particular uh, but I think um, yeah I think Brahim Diaz came off the bench and he, and he showed us something uh, which was really convincing. I think my main thing from last week was Brahim Diaz and Arda Galer should have come on earlier. And it was good to see Brahim Diaz come on earlier in this game. Uh, because, you know, I think he, he, he rewarded us with his, um, with his goal. So I was really happy with Brahim Diaz. And then Endrick, obviously, scoring his first goal at the Bernabeu and his first goal for Real Madrid as a whole. Um, I think he was... He, that goal was just fantastic. You know, the, the way he just got, you know, half an inch of space... And he just slammed it in with his weak foot. That that's just that that is something you can't teach. That ability, I think, is something that probably only Mbappe in this squad has, to be honest. And that technique is the reason why we signed him. You know, you saw this so many times at Palmeiras. His 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 ability to create a shot for himself is is just I think is the best is amongst the best in the world, and is something that we need because one of my main criticisms so far this season has been. These guys have looked for a bit too much for the perfect goal, and sometimes they could just hit the ball and and shoot. And I think uh, Endrix could help us do that in in this season. So I think Endrix's contribution could be huge, um, especially if he's if he's going to do that a lot of the season. So I was really happy with both of these guys. Both of these guys were really damn good. Um, and yeah, you couldn't really start much better if you're if you're Endrix. So um, yeah, Endrix really good goal. Brahim Diaz really good goal. Uh, Modric I thought was good off the bench and, and provided us with some stability um, and then obviously Danny Sobos I think um, looked pretty damn good so, himself so yeah overall the subs were really good and I think uh, Carl Ancelotti timed them really well this this week um, as opposed to last week where the subs weren't great uh, and were at the wrong time so yeah what are your thoughts on the, on the subs? Yeah I think Diaz yeah, has always been um, one of our best players um, ever since last season. Um, so since the game against Las Palmas, it's been about when he started um, and scored um, after he struggled for minutes in the opening stage of the season. I think he's been good. I think he's been actually at his trust. And the fans are always calling for him to get more minutes. And every time he's played, he's been amazing. Sometimes he was a bit quiet and out of the game, but that's that's a small sample size. Is the main thing is that when he plays, he does well. Um, he is an incredible player. He is one of the best squad players in the world, in my opinion. One of the best squad players. Um, there's something special about him. If I'm being honest, um, because he can be a starter and he can play off the bench. Um, not, um, not many players have, have, have those attributes. Um, not many players can be consistent off the bench for a long and lengthy period of time. And not only that, but when he gets the opportunity to start, he always does, he always, uh, does well. Expect, no matter who he plays with, whether it's Bellingham, Diaz, not just Diaz, Bellingham, um, Metro Group in the CSC, he, he is so consistent with a true number. Uh, on either side, left or right wing, he, he does well in my opinion, and it's just, it's just something that you have to appreciate um, the quality that he has. So, um, he's a top player who can turn the game, and the way he comes on the field, he, he can offer, offer something different, especially with the fact that our, we, we try to play so much on the left. I think other players like him is going to 
who's going to open up a lot of lanes. Um, and of course, it doesn't matter sometimes how much Ancelotti trusts Rodrigo, which he does. But um, I just think that we have to understand that when you have, when you have these type of players who can, who can offer you something defense, then sometimes players like Rodrigo, unfortunately for him, he, he, he won't even always start because um, of how good he is and what he can do on the other side of the pitch. So I think um, hopefully he gets more stats. I think when start players like that and different players in one of spaces, then it's, it's easier to, um, to start the game well and do, and do, and do good. So. Yeah, and I think his, his positioning, all of that, his movement is so much different from the guys we have. I think that could be huge, especially if we're looking for a, someone to change the game and he proved that last season that he is that guy to change the game even if he is the a guy to start he he, was, he proved last season that he he will he will go ahead and win us the game so overall Raheem Diaz fantastic way to start the season once again I'm, I'm delighted with Raheem Diaz because you know when he was at AC Milan he had good moments but you know you never thought that this would this this ultra consistent guy could could come out of it and you know, I just think uh, I'm I'm so glad with Raheem Diaz and I couldn't be happy with him. Um, so, yeah, one, once again, fantastic from Raheem Diaz. Um, let's talk about um, Mbappe because I think we do we do need to talk about him. Listen, um, first off, I thought he was unimpactful, apart from the volley that he had, uh, which I thought was fantastic. Um, I think he was quite unimpactful in the end. But the second half... He drew a lot of his defenders and he, he caused plenty of problems for for, for Valladolid and they just couldn't contain his movement. And, you know, that is obviously one of his best attributes is his off-the-ball movement. He's just, he's just too quick. You can't catch up with it. You know, one one movement and he's and he's gone. And that, that's that's ultimately where he's, he excels and, he, you know, he's, he's mentally one step ahead of you and he's obviously physically one step ahead of you at all times. It just, the fi- finishing was not there. And, you know, he missed some very good chances um, in the second half. And it's just like, it feels like if Mbappe just puts that in and we're, we're talking about something completely different once again. Um, but, you know, obviously, I thought initially his, his everything else was good. Off the ball, it was good. And his, his positioning was good. And in the second half, you know, the way he drew the defenders gave Vinny uh, Ardegula all of these guys a lot more space to play with. I think it was all good. It just the finishing wasn't there, and I'm sure it'll come around. It's him, it's Kylian Mbappe. <laughs> Obviously, it'll come a lot, come around. But um, you know, I was a bit disappointed with the finishing, but everything else I thought was good, and obviously it didn't cost us in this game, so I I think that was fine. But you know, a game against Las Palmas in 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 the Canary Islands, I think uh, is going to be a difficult one, uh, a difficult away game. Let's let's see what Mbappe does there because that has to be a you know has to be better finishing performance definitely I feel because Las Palmas definitely um, definitely know how to defend uh, so we're gonna find out so um, yeah what are your thoughts on on Kylian Mbappe's performance? Yeah, when the first goal comes, I think I think he's gonna start scoring a bit more. You know, um, the the first. The first and this, um, I'm not too sure who that specific there is, but um, it's not coming to me right now. But it took some time for maybe a couple of years to get his first goal. I don't think it's um, Cristiano. I, I was just say it's Cristiano. Let's say his first. Maybe I remember when Cristiano signed for Juventus. He his first few games. Um, he didn't score in his first few games. Then when he scored his first goal, he started scoring some important goals for the club. Of course, um, and now Lati he is getting old and it wasn't like how good as his time in Madrid, but I'm just going to say that when he signed his first three or four games, he didn't score. And then he scored um, one of the easiest goals of his career. Then a few minutes later, he scored a second one. So I think um, we just have to give him time. And when, when he, of course, scores, um, it's going to start slowing down. Yeah, it's not something you can be concerned about. He's a real graph player. Of course, there will be some panic. You know, um, um, with some players, but with some with some players, but I think with elite players like Mbappe, I think the goals would come. Find an elite player, Alan, in this first game against Liverpool, missed a lot of chances. When he signed for Manchester City, of course, and cost them the community team. But then the, that exact same season, the, the next game, um, he scored two goals and he scored three and two, and then he 
have them, we have them on the travel like yeah. It's fine to perform in the big games, but that's 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 not the point I'm trying to use. I'm trying to say that maybe um, it takes some time and there are some sloppy moments there when you don't take your chances. But um, for world class players, it's not something to be concerned about. Um, like like everyone always says, yeah, as long as if you have to trust one place, you have to trust We were just you know um, the, to make to make it work. So so yeah, I. Uh, I know that there's a lot of stuff that that, that needs to be to be to be worked on, but but I think for in terms of Mbappe's finishing, I think the goals will come. The goals will come. So I'm, I'm not concerned about it. I'm, I'm really not concerned about it. I'm of course the big, I'm more concerned about the, the the fact that we were a bit too heavy on the left side. Um, but with players like Diaz and Kule playing, it will help a lot. So I'm not I'm not concerned. Yeah, I think. Um... Like you said, the goals will come, and um, yeah, we just gotta wait for now. Um, but let's talk about some of the other players uh, before we wrap this up. Uh, I thought Frank Garcia had a good game. Um, obviously, he didn't have too much to do on the defensive end, which is good. Um, obviously, he's gonna have to adapt a little bit because now he can't just swing in crosses. Uh, there's no hostility up front, so he can't just do that. But I thought he adapted pretty well. He gave us threat on the left hand side, and um, I think he he was he's overall pretty good in this game. Um, Danny Carvajal, I think, does look a bit exhausted at points, and um, I don't know. Maybe we should, you know, just think about putting Lucas Vasquez in for a game or two, um, just to give Danny Carvajal a bit more of a rest, um, because I think um, he obviously was very intense in the in the Spain Euros victory. So I think give a give Danny Carvajal a few more games off would be would be good for him. Um, and then obviously I thought Ardu Guler, I thought Ardu Guler was pretty good in the second half. I thought first half he did have to adapt a little bit because I thought physically he was um, he was getting dominated a little bit by the by the lead players who were who were trying to push him around a little bit. But second half, you know, he had a lot more space to play in. And like I said earlier, if it was in or if you if you had caught him on any other day, I think he would have scored maybe two goals in this game because he had some plenty of very very good chances. But it's good that he's getting. In those positions, and um, yeah, I think he was causing plenty of problems for for Bayer um who had to consider that you know there was another guy in this team who were, who was um, who was causing them problems a bit. But you know, uh, nonetheless, I think I think it was a decent performance. Maybe not as good as we had hoped, but I thought it was a, pr- a pretty good performance from from Arthur Guller. And um, yeah, Thibaut Courtois came, uh, and and um, you know when he was called upon, uh, he was pretty good. And then overall, I thought Carlo Ancelotti. I think the decisions that he made, decisions that he made in this game were were pretty good, and um, and he was good when he was called upon. So yeah, I, overall, I'm happy with the win. The performance could have been better, but we take the three points, and we hope that the game against Las Palmas on Thursday it will be better. And um, and yeah, hopefully, Mbappe gets uh, gets gets his first goal in La Liga, and uh, hopefully, let's 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 hope for a better performance. One in which um, all of these problems are magically magically disappear. So, um, yeah, what were your thoughts on on the anything else in the, about the game? Um, I think um, yeah, um, I, I share your sentiment with Kavahar. Uh, he's got to have a uh, lot more work to do this season as well. So Lucas Vasquez should get more minutes. Maybe it's going to come against Las Palmas. Um, but but yeah, I think. Carvajal was just decent, but he, he looks a bit tired ever since um, the last game. Um, he, is, he hasn't been real class in this last few games, but he hasn't been poor either, um, like, like what we saw a couple of years ago. So we don't want to ever be in him for him to be um, criticized again when he struggled with uh, the fact that we thought that he was finished, um, but maybe he just needs a bit of rest now. Um, no, no other major points for me. Um, I'm looking forward to see how we play against Las Palmas. I'm looking forward to it. It's difficult, you know, when you don't have space up top, you know, um, but uh, with guys like Diaz and Gule, that's going to help a lot with, with all the kind of players that we have in Al Bellingham and Kamavinga. You need guys like Gule and Diaz to have space. Uh, Mbappé and Mbappé would struggle to, to, to run behind as much as possible. Um, with, with, the, with the players that we have, you know, with all Tony Kurtz, um, to open up these spaces, um, we, we are still a team with Vegas. Um, the luck needs to be better. 
I find that it could be the blocks and could be back up with all the and with all the you know, so hopefully the more games I think we'll find out best them on on the you know, no one understand that Ceballos, Diaz and Gule would would be incredible players to come off the bench and make a happy more trick as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to see how, how things develop and I must say that I'm happy and um that we got the win. Um the main thing was the win. The performances was the second thing and, and the the cohesion was the third thing now. I think we got the win, we got decent performances and the cohesion um, would come hopefully soon. Uh, it's more step by step and I'm, and I'm looking forward to see how the season develops. So hopefully we have more positive things to, to talk about um, throughout the next sort of podcast. Yeah, um, and just to finish off, I'm going to read you guys the, the La Liga table as it stands currently. Uh, first is Celta de Vigo, surprisingly, six points. Uh, from two games. Second, Barcelona, also six points. And then third, Aleti, uh, with four points. Us in fourth, with also four points. Uh, Villarreal in fifth. Leganes in sixth. Uh, Osasuna, seventh. And Rayo Vallecano, eighth. Uh, Real Sociedad, ninth. And then Real Valladolid, number ten. So that is the top of the La Liga table. Um, yeah, obviously, Barcelona gone two from two. Uh, Aleti, uh, only one from two, same as us. But um, overall, so far, it's obviously not been as, as good as we'd wanted, but, you know, alas, let's hope this starts to pick up. You know, maybe this is just a little bit of a uh, acclimatisation period, but hopefully it picks up um, as we go further into the season. But we take the win, we move on to Las Palmas on Thursday, who's obviously going to cause us more problems because they're another defensive team. Um, but, you know, what? we haven't seen them um, since, they, since uh, Garcia Pimienta left, so... Maybe Las Palmas are a completely different side, but um, alas, that is it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's Los Blancos podcast. Uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.